Oh, look at this tender bastard. Look, that's that's the Lord. That's that's the Lord our God. That's one of his many inceptions. <laughs> the frying of Soma. Did he spit blood out of his eyes at you? Uh, no. <laughs> God, they're so chill. Holy shit, can you be my Good spiritual soul. will you be my spiritual advisor? <laughs> Please? This fing guy, look at him. He looks serious. Oh man, he's like, he he's like, I got some f words for you, man. No, I'm holding him super gentle. I'm gonna give him a, I'll give him a massage later. Not like a happy ending massage, you know, just like a nice, like a pl like platonic. Somebody put a lot of effort into making a wall real nice, like they're stacking rocks and stuff, you know. That's that. This is. I don't know what they were doing, but it looks good. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays a Botany Doesn't. But we're here in Carretero, Mexico, giving a landscape a good rectal exam, like we do. Looking at all the nice stuff going on. A lot of interesting stuff going on. Got a lot. Got a nice mam right there. See that? Just all sunk into the ground, looking like Mammillaria hyderi, but forming a little colony. Don't think that's the species, but uh, got all kinds of good shit here. We got. Uh, Jatropha dioica, that one's got fruit on it, which of course that's the uh, notorious leather stem. The leather daddy stem that you get in Texas. So we get a lot of a lot of similar plants that you get here, you also get in South Texas, right? The more I pay attention to this shit, the more I realize all this human made up shit is just garbage, you know? It's fucking, it's the plants have been here for millions of years, they occur all over the place. Yucca here is Yucca carnarosana, we got uh, Cylindra puncha, I think that's Imbricata. And uh, another Opuntia species. Now this guy over here I want to show you. Look at that volcanic stuff. This is all caliche and limestone stuff. Then you got this pinker volcanic, this extrusive igneous rock. But look at this. I want to show you this nice Opuntia. Now I, I don't pay too much attention to prickly pears because you know, they kind of all look the same sometimes. I do appreciate their, you know, what they do for the ecosystem and whatnot. Multiple food sources for multiple different organisms. But uh, this one, Opuntia stenopetala. Uh, has some very distinct flowers. It almost looks like maybe it's going for Hummer pollination. Maybe it was selected for by Hummers. I'm sure bees hit those too. But it does re remind me, it's slightly reminiscent of Consolia monilla formis, which you get down here in the Dominican Republic, which certainly was selected for by Hummers. Look at those flowers. Holy shit. That's nice right there. See that? Spines and flowers, those bright orange flowers, so distinct. Look at that. Oh. You know, not not every Nepal is the same. All right, and they do have glockids, but some of them can actually be kind of nice. Not the glockids, but the opuntias. And then here, judging by this this jagged bastard turning his stems into spines, uh, we got a member of the buckthorn family, Ramnesi, as you can tell. Now I seen a flower down here. I don't know where the hell. I don't know where it went. It's it, I fucking lost it. But it's a species of Condalia. Flowers are tiny, absolutely tiny. Yeah, there we go. See that? See that? See that? Look at that little star-shaped flower. Oh, I'm getting stabbed by it. Velvety stems. Condalia volutina. Velvety stems. Nice indumentum on the leaves, little spatulate shaped leaves. All right, a lot of Condalia species in Texas as well. All right, get the same because we're not that far from Texas, honestly. You just keep you keep going north, you know. Anyway, let's see what else we got going here. These little dwarf bursera, this is nice too. Look at that. Look at it with them juicy, you know, because bursera has resin canals in it. Berseraceae, the Frankincense family, it's sister to Anacardiaceae, the poison oak and mango family. All right, which, uh, you know, both those families, Bursaraceae and Anacardiaceae, both got resin canals in them stems. So they exude a lot of sap. They produce a lot of sap. You know, you eat lacquer trees, frankincense, all that shit, copal. The incense is made from cutting open Bursara species and bleeding them. And Mexico is the epicenter of Bursara diversity. I sure hope this is Bursara and not Pseudosmodinium, which it can sometimes look like. Both could just be drought deciduous right now, but I'm pretty sure that's a bursar. Look at that papery stem, the elephant tree genus. See that? Succulent, succulent trunks. Pseudosmodinium has urushiol in it. That's why I was hoping that's not what I was touching. I've had many a run-in with urushiol. One third of the plants in Anacardiaceae produce that compound, and it will give you a bad ass rash. Okay, let's keep moving on. 
So I'm just I'm sitting here fun over this guy and Gabrielle here. You want to tell us? You want to tell us what you're? What, what are we looking at here? This is a Cadenicarpus pseudomacrocella. It used to be Turbinicarpus, but now it's in the Cadenicarpus genus. Really so small. That guy's just how deep does that stem go underground? I wonder. They're kind of tuberous. Uh -huh. Not that like they 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 develop a tuberous root, but not it's not like huge like Lophophora or stuff like that. But yeah. Those trichomes are just they just look like little hairs, man. Even they even very stiff. No, they're they just like feel more like fuzzyish. The spines just feel like little hairs. Yeah. yeah. And I think the difference between like uh, the pseudo, what is the difference between the pseudo, those are cadenicarpus and turbinicarpus? The distribution and the amount of the spines. The spines is the one is the, the one that defies turbinicarpus from cadenicarpus. The amount of spines and the longitude of the spines. And Did you read the paper on it yet? I'm not even that familiar with yeah, the carpus. No, no, they I, split it off. Yeah. Oh, splitting's always better than lumping, at least. God, it's obnoxious when people do that. There's another one over here. Yeah, Mir, why don't you just go ahead and move that? Move that. Can you move that thing out of the way? They, they're just hiding. Look at that guy. Look at that. It's such a cryptic habit. Holy shit. He's just half underground. Look at that. <laughs> And of course it is the dry season. Rain should be starting soon, so a lot of stuff should be coming to light. This guy I didn't even mean to make him I didn't mean to make him part of the crew, but he's he's relaxing. He's just hanging out with me while I do this. Look at that. How the fuck tell me those eyes. There's something there's a higher intelligence in there, isn't there? You can't fucking deny it. I know some pretty dumb humans, man. This guy's probably smarter than a lot of people I know. Holy shit. Okay, buddy, come on. There you go. You'll be you'll be safe there. Look, look at his nice head, huh? Phrynosoma orbiculari. Yeah, look at that. That is a fucking tiny. Look at how tiny those things are. Look at that. So cryptic too. There's one. There's one about the flower. Look at that. This is so many people would just walk right over this without seeing this. Look at that thing. Things in bud. Again, those spines helping more with camouflage than with armed defense. There's a bunch of little guys right there. You can almost mistake them for rabbit shit. Kind of reminds me of that Escobaria minima that we get in uh, on those Novaculite soils in West Texas. Look at that. Holy shit. Looks like dead grass. Spines look like dead grass. I'm probably sitting on one right now. And there's that Mammillaria pseudocrosigra. Back there, the kind of has got like that hider eye habit. Bunch of little tubercles. Just sinks into the ground. Keeping it down, staying low. I don't know what these grass species are. These little diminutive grasses, but those are obviously helping these guys blend in. Look at that. Look, <laughs> you see them, then you forget. You don't move, you just turn away, and then you forget where the fucking plant was. Look at that thing. Look at that. Seriously. That's incredible. Yeah, look at those. See, those? that's like an adult. See that? That's like a larger one. God, I, man, I bet some of those European collectors go absolutely ape shit over this. There's probably a fucking van full of checks in route here right now. A lot of poaching's been bad in Mexico lately. You know, it's kind of like you want people to know about these because they're such cool you know, models of evolution and such a great evolutionary strategy too. So many of these cacti, that's why I love cacti so much, but then the collectors go nuts for them. You get little, you know, you get that primate hoarding thing, that fucked up neurochemistry that we have, because we really are just monkeys. So someone's got to come out here and have it. I need to have the habitat intact so I can come visit it and appreciate it and study it and learn more about evolution and life in my own place in this bigger picture of this fucking dog and pony show. And look at that thing. That's incredible. Oh. See, everybody wants to get a photo of a horned toad, right? See, he's just chilling her. See, everybody, you know, because they're so nice, man. It's why. He's really, I'm telling you. God's true form is a horned lizard. Well, what's that? What do you do? What do you just make your faces at me? I, got a, I just got a nice photo of him. Hanging out my hands with his, with his, you know, with his arms out like that, which is nice because then I can, now I can draw him hanging out in a hot tub or like chilling on a, you know, chilling on a couch or something. 
<laughs> get a, I'll get a tramp stamp tattoo of a frying a soma chilling on a couch. Just look at that fucking. Oh, man, now you see, you don't like that. It is possible to vibe them out. So look at it. So we'll play a game of Where's Waldo. Can you find the Cadena Carpus, formerly Turbina Carpus, which is a huge genus? Turbina Carpus is a huge genus. All right. Lots of diversity. In it. It's kind of, kind of. I guess you could say it's an adaptive radiation throughout Mexico. But it uh, recently got recircumscribed, and I, I suppose, according to molecular evidence, this clade. I think there's like four or five species, maybe more, that got put in Cadena Carpus. This clade was different enough and farther away from uh, from the rest of the species when they built a tree, a phylogeny, an evolutionary tree, that they uh, placed it in its own genus. So this is no longer in Cadena Carpus, but, but these guys are just small. Look at that. Look how tiny. They just almost geophytes. See that? Like they're, they're three quarters of the stem. Because that's all this is. This is just a photosynthetic stem. It's submerged in the gravel. And then the spines are just acting to blend it in as, as dead grass. As you see here and here and here and all over, all over the place. Quite a few different species of cactus do that. They just blend in with dead grass. Spines can serve multiple purposes. They're not just armor. They're also camouflage. They can be fog catchment, etc. Look at this. This is a goddamn ephedra. Ephedra compacta. Look at that. I assume there's just been intense grazing on it by mammals as well. You know, by the cows. Probably by the cows and the sheep. Maybe a donkey or two walks by, you know, just going to visit. Going to visit the mountain or whatever. But uh, it's a remarkable form for it. I mean, Jesus Christ. You got a thick stem right there. And then I guess these just must get nibbled down. But... Ephedrine and some other alkaloids, of course, are in these photosynthetic stems. This, of course, is not a flowering plant. It's more closely related to, like, you know, Welwitchia, that weird bastard that grows in the fog deserts in Namibia. But either way, it's a fucking, it's a really cool plant. Look, there's another one over there. Look at that. God, just these little, these little broom-like mounds. Really want to find whoever built that wall. They did a really good job on a craftsmanship. Agave aplanata right there. Looks like so many agaves, but each one is unique, just like each one of you. You're each just your own unique individual. Actually, a lot of people are just conformist by nature and kind of disappointing, but they have the potential at least. So we got this nice little colony, some what appears to be either, either a dead or maybe it's just dormant legume, because again, we are coming out of the dry season here. And we got a nice little clump of Mammillaria pseudocrucigra, of course, growing in that... Uh, Oh, we're getting some weird distortion. I'm getting acid flashbacks. I don't know what that's about. Probably something wrong with the camera software. But anyway, up see there it goes again. All right. Sometimes you know they come in and out. The vibrational frequencies and what the shit. <laughs> Put your tinfoil hat on. Anyway, you can see it's just using this legume as a nurse plant, which is nice. It's probably too dark in there when it's raining. So maybe this is dead. I don't know. Who knows? But. And that the Opuntia petala is everywhere as well, as well as Jotropha dioica. And right here we got Selaginella, of course. God, that's nice. Oh, and you got a nice little mam growing right under there as well. Looking like Hyderite. Look at that Selaginella. Oh, nobody ever pays attention to the Selages. Apparently they got some rain here. The rain just started the last couple days. You got some rain last night. But uh, this, of course, the resurrection, quote, fern, though it's not a fern, it's a lycophyte. And there's that Jotropha dioica. That's nice. Look at that. We got Asclepius linearia, and we got a nice colony of mams right there with a little ring of trichomes right where the flowers would be because mammillaries flower in a ring around the apex. Just got that little condalia, a little buckthorn. Just everybody, you know, this fucking limestone is really making me happy. I don't know. It's like my Jotropha dioica, too. Still didn't find out what that bursar was. See this, and this is nice too. Someone took this wall down for us so we could just walk right over it. That was very considerate. Now we're at 7,000 feet here, so you know, though this is a desert, uh, we still are high as fuck. So it's nowhere near as hot as South Texas, or actually much of Texas. All right, 7,000 feet. Look at those beautiful echinocactus platyacanthus. Look at that. Ah, oh, the bisnagas. They can get nine feet tall in some cases. 
and the young ones look so much different from the older ones. The young ones have those cool red striations on the ribs. We'll see if we can find some. Let's go check out the uh, apical maris them. Look, look at that. Look at the fuzzy shits. You like the fuzzy shits? Oh, it's pillows. Oh, it's velvety. It looks like there's a fruit maturing in there. Not ready yet, but it'll be pushed out probably in another month or so. I can feel it already. These things can live probably hundreds of years. This is probably, I have no gauge, maybe 40 years. You know, but they actually do get quite a bit of rain here during the rainy season. It's just most of the season is very dry. And because it's low latitude, when it's dry, it's also very hot. So you got this long dry season. I wonder, wonder what agave species this is right here. I love a bisnaga. Stino petal is looking good. Everyone's looking so good. Look at it. it's, a, it's a female Jatropha dioica with fruit on it. Swollenovaries.com. These plants are either male or female. That's a great plant. I wish more people planted this in native plant gardens. Talk about a low maintenance plant. Holy shit. Extensive colonies and it spreads too. Does great in the garden. Flowers look super cool. And it's got them leather stems nice. Look, you can see it's, they, they just start getting rain. See, shit's just waking up from being drought deciduous, from, from drought dormancy. Those leaves are going to get, I don't know, three, four times bigger.